Hi there, welcome back to my YouTube channel. My name is Emma Pigeon. Yes, that's my real last name. I'm a yoga instructor here on Instagram and in the Phoenix and Scottsdale area in Arizona. Um, today's location looks a little bit different. I'm actually at one of the resorts that I teach at. It's a very well-known wellness resort. If you are in the area or looking for a wellness vacation, I would definitely check it out. It's called Savannah, C-I-V-A-N-A. -I, I will put the link below. Um, I'm not affiliated with, I mean, I teach there, but I don't get any sort of benefit if you book a stay, it's just a really awesome place to come uh, unwind, relax, and enjoy some of the wellness offerings. Um, most of the views are cooler than this. We're out in the middle of the desert, but today we are in the room where we do wall yoga. So uh, this class is going to be uh, kind of an introduction to handstand. So we're gonna do a little bit of a flow, stretch the body and warm everything up and do some preparation for handstand. So it should be nice and fun. Even if you've never tried handstand before, I'm confident you will enjoy this class and hopefully learn something new. Let's go ahead and we'll get started in a child's pose. I've got two blocks. If you have blocks, those would be great but they are not uh, mandatory. Let's go ahead and grab a child's pose. Um, towards the back of your mat, knees out wide and forehead down. Might feel nice to rock your forehead a little bit side to side. Take a few deep breaths here. Feel yourself arrive a little bit more into the moment with every exhale. Even if you do not do a handstand today or don't even feel like you get close, see if you can find some enjoyment in the practice, in the journey, even in the things that you quote unquote fail at. There's a lot of learning to be done and hopefully some fun as well. Crawl your fingertips a little bit more forward. Lift your forehead and then thread your left arm underneath. So like a thread the needle, but you're still in a child's pose. Keep sinking your tailbone back and then try to drop your right armpit a little bit. So you feel a nice big stretch through the back of the left shoulder, your upper back. And switch, extend your left arm, thread your right arm underneath. Returning your forehead to the mat. Try to drop your left armpit a little bit as you sink your tailbone back. So you should feel a nice stretch through the upper back behind the right shoulder. And unthread your right arm. Let's go ahead and slide all the way forward onto our belly into a Sphinx pose. Stack your shoulders over your elbows. Press the tops of your feet down. Plug your shoulders back. Pull your chin a little bit in towards your throat. Feel some length on the back of your neck. Keep the tops of your feet down. If that's too much, you can tuck your toes. I'm gonna to have you lift your hips up towards a forearm plank. You'll feel your lower abs a lot, especially with the tops of the feet down. I kind of call this like a penguin plank because I feel like it uh, resembles like the penguin floppers. But um, again, if that's too much, you can always tuck your toes and hold a regular forearm plank. Maybe you're like me and your foot is cramping. That doesn't feel too nice. Do your best to hold it. Feel some space between your shoulder blades. Sink your hips up slightly for three, two, one, lower your hips down. Let's go right arm out to the right and roll onto your right shoulder. Step your left foot behind you. Rest your head on the mat. This is one of my favorite stretches for opening up your chest. You can also do this standing up against a wall. If you are not in the middle of a yoga class and you just want a nice shoulder stretch, maybe in the middle of your day, roll onto your stomach and we'll switch. Left arm out to the left, roll onto your left shoulder. You wanna find a little bit of discomfort, feel some sensation, not pain. If you start to feel pain in your yoga poses, I encourage you to back out. Roll back onto your stomach. Slide your hands underneath your shoulders. Let's go ahead and roll up to a cobra pose. 
roll your shoulders back and down. You can keep your feet out a little bit wide if that feels good and drop your hips side to side. All right, meet back in center, bend your right knee and point your right toes up. So you're looking forward. Now I want you to start to look over your right shoulder. You're gonna roll onto the left leg, step your right foot behind you. So kind of like what we just did on our stomachs, but now you're sitting left leg extended, right knee bent with the foot on the mat. Push down into your left hand and your left foot and lift yourself up towards a wild thing. Stack your left shoulder over your wrist. Great. Flip yourself back around to a plank position and drop down to your knees. Inhale, arch your back, cow pose. Exhale, round your spine, cat. Inhale, arch your back, cow pose. Exhale, round. Take a few more on your own here. Move your breath, exaggerate the movements. Next time you would be going to cow pose, I want you to go to puppy pose instead. Walk your hands forward, forehead down, hips stay high. Press the tops of your feet and ankles down, especially the inside. So kind of like the top of the big toe. Feel your inner thighs roll back. Slide, look forward, slide all the way forward and your hands back. Roll yourself up again, cobra pose. This time bend your left knee and then start to look over your left shoulder, rolling onto your outer right hip. Your right leg is straight until your left foot steps behind you. So you're facing the back of your mat, push down into your feet and your right hand and lift yourself up towards a wild thing. Right shoulder stacked over the wrist, look at either hand to protect your neck and then flip yourself back around, plank position. Drop down to your knees. Let's turn the fingers to the outside edges of the mat and rock a little bit side to side. If you want more sensation, bring the hands closer together or even turn the fingers to point backwards. Turn your fingers to point forward, tuck your toes. Imagine squeezing a block between your knees as you hover your shins off the mat. Look down between your thumbs. Try to keep your back flat, low belly engaged. Broaden your collarbones. Keep your knees bent, push your hips up and back towards a bear pose. Outer hips lifting, heels lifting. Find some length through your waistline and your spine. Straighten your legs, but your heels are still lifted, and roll yourself forward to a plank. Bend your knees, push yourself back to bear pose, and then straighten your legs again, roll yourself forward to plank. Bend your knees, go back to bear pose, straighten your legs, and roll to plank. Bend your knees, sink back to bear pose, and hold. Keep pushing into your palms. Look forward between your thumbs. Bend your knees and like you're gonna jump or spring forward, sink back more. Instead of jumping forward, just step your right foot forward. Spend a few moments bending and straightening your legs here. Warm up your hips. Then pause with your right leg straight. Place the ball of the foot on the mat, toes down. Think nice long pyramid pose. Your left heel is still off the mat though. Inner thighs pulling towards each other. Sternum forward, shoulders back. Drop your left knee and reach both arms up. Low lunge, Anjaneyasana. Relax your shoulders, grab your left wrist, inhale and exhale, lean over to the right. Nice side body stretch. Think of a little twist as well, like your left side waist is going forward, left armpits going forward a little bit. Inhale, back up center. Fingertips on the mat or block, standing L. Lift your left leg up behind you, flex your left foot. You might even look back at your toes to make sure. Plug your right hip back. Again, sternum forward, broaden your collarbones. 
Walk your hands back a little bit for standing splits. Forehead towards your right shin. Swing your left leg up as high as you can. Squeeze your lower abdomen. Crisscross your left foot behind your right foot. Walk your hands to the right. You might even pop your right heel off of the mat for a moment. Walk your hands back through center. Uncross your feet so the big toes touch. Lift up halfway and exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise, come all the way up to stand. As you do that, also lift your heels up. So your arms are reaching up, heels lifting, hug the ankle bones in, squeeze your legs. Firm your glutes. Keep your heels lifted as you start to push your butt back and swan dive down towards the mat. Keep your heels lifted, it should be challenging. You can always place your hands on a block or two out in front of you, but do your best to keep your heels lifted. Eventually, your hands will be on the mat, kind of out in front of your feet, so maybe in front of your mat. If you need to, you can always step your feet back if you would like your hands on the mat. Your heels are lifted, hands planted out in front, flat. If that doesn't work out, place your hands on blocks. Now, I want you to drop your heels towards the mat and feel your weight sink back. Then lift your heels up and feel your shoulders stack over your wrists. Again, drop your heels back, feel your weight sink back. Then shift your shoulders forward over your wrists, lift your heels. Do that three more times. Sink back and forward. Squeeze your lower abdomen, sink back and forward. Sink back and forward, hold three. Heels lifted really high on your toes, two and one. Step your right foot back and your left foot back, chaturanga. Inhale, cobra or upward facing dog, and exhale back to downward facing dog. Lift your heels and bend your knees. Push your belly back to your thighs, bear pose. And then again, keep sinking back and look forward like you're gonna jump, or shoot your feet forward. But I kinda want you to think about springing forward, just stepping with your left foot. Spend a few moments bending and straightening your legs. Just waking up the hips. Pause with your left leg straight. Place the ball of your foot down, toes down. Feel your inner thighs like magnets towards each other, really high on your right toes. Plug your shoulders back, long spine. Drop your right knee and reach both arms up, low lunge. Heavy in your left heel, lighter toes. Grab your right wrist and lean to the left. Think of a little twist to the left. Feel your right hip going forward for three. two, and one. Back up center, fingertips on the mat, bump forward, matter blocks, standing L. Right leg lift, flex your foot, and then look back at your toes. Feel your left hip crease pull back. Walk your hands back a little bit, standing splits. Kicking your right leg up nice and high, maybe grabbing your left ankle and pulling forward. Squeeze your low belly, feel a little twist to the left. Step your right foot behind your left foot, crisscross. Walk your hands over to the left, maybe even popping your left heel up off of the mat. Walk your hands back through center, uncross your feet. Inhale, lift up halfway. Exhale, forward fold. Inhale, rise, come all the way up, reach your arms up, lift your heels up. Squeeze your calf muscles. Again, with your heels lifted, hinge, so your butt kind of goes back, sternum forward like a swan dive. You're diving down as slow as you can. Eventually, hands will be on the mat in front. Again, you can walk your feet back a little bit if you'd prefer to have your hands on the mat. We're gonna do those same little heel pumps. So you sink your heels back, your weight goes back, then you shift your shoulders forward over your wrist, squeeze your low belly. You almost feel as if your toes could float off the mat at a certain point. Heels back, shift your weight forward. Heels back, inhale. Exhale, lean forward. Three more. Last two. Last one, shift forward, hold. 
Imagine your palms could push through the mat, lengthen your arms, look between your thumbs or back at your feet for three. Squeeze your inner thighs, two. And one, step back, chaturanga. Inhale and exhale back, downward facing dog. Spread your fingers out, sink your heels towards the mat. Take a breath in and a big sigh. All right, lift your right leg up, bend your knee, stack up your hips. You might bend straighten your leg a few times or roll out your hip joint. Let's make it feel good. Try to keep your left side, left leg nice and stable. Take an inhale, square your hips. Exhale, step your right foot forward. Let's wiggle the right foot out and come up to a high lunge crescent warrior. Both arms reaching up. Bind your hands behind your back. Work your knuckles towards your left heel, lift your chest. Then I want you to dive your chest onto your right thigh. Try to keep your chest glued to your thigh as you start to lean your weight forward and lift your left leg up behind you. So I'm not sure this, kind of, I think it's called like drinking bird pose. I usually do this with eagle arms. Maybe we call this toppling tree as well. You're basically in the standing splits, but you're not using your hands. Squeeze your right oblique, right side of your waist, and then place your hands on the mat in front of your right foot. Now those heel pumps, we did them with both feet. We're gonna do them with one foot. If you would like to scoot your right foot back a little bit, go for it. Left leg lifted. You're gonna lift your right heel off the mat as you lean forward and then down. Right heel lift and lower. Do that three more times, lift and lower, lift and lower. Last time, lift, hold three, two, one. Step your left foot behind your right foot like we did earlier. Walk your hands to the right. Come up onto the balls of your feet. Your heels are lifted. Start to walk your hands through center all the way around to the left. We've done this before. You're spinning on your feet, so you're now facing the back of your mat. You're in a forward fold, technically at the front of your mat, but facing backwards. Walk your hands all the way forward until you're in a down dog. Then lift your left leg up, bend your knee, stack your left hip, and roll it out. Take a nice big inhale breath, exhale, step your left foot forward, wiggle it a little to the left and reach both arms up to a high lunge crescent warrior. Bind your hands behind your back, opposite thumb on top. Inhale, curl back a little bit. Exhale, glue the left side of your rib cage to your left thigh. Start to lean your weight forward into your left leg and lift your right leg up behind you, toppling tree pose. I like a little bend in the standing leg. Feel your torso turn a little bit to the left. Point your right toes. And release your hands onto the mat. You want your hands in front of your left foot. We're gonna do those little heel pumps, but your right leg stays lifted the whole time. Lift your left heel up, lean your weight forward and lower. Lift up, lean forward and lower. Last three. Two, one, step your right foot behind your left foot so your ankles are crossed and walk your hands over to the left. Walk your hands back through center, keep going to the right, lift your heels, spin on your feet so you're now facing again the front of your mat but standing at the back of your mat. Walk your hands all the way forward so you're in a plank position. Drop your knees, let's grab a camel pose, kind of stretch, stretch out the front of your body that's been working hard, your core. Bring your hands to your low back, move your tailbone down. Inhale, pick your back ribs up and exhale, lean back. Push your hips forward, this should feel really nice after all of that folding we've been doing. 
Come back up through center, place your hands on the mat, round your back, cat pose. Feel that shoulder protraction when you round your back in cat pose. This is the same action you're gonna want through your arms when we work on handstand. Now keep the tops of your feet tucked, or uh, untucked, I should say, tops of your feet down. Hover your shins off the mat, kind of like what we did in that hovering bear position, but now the tops of the feet are down. You squeeze your lower abs a lot, Imagine dragging your hands back towards your feet. Hold, three, two. Keep your feet flat, like uh, face down. Lift your hips up, roll over your toes. So now you're in a downward facing dog. There we go. Lots of different core work today. Hope you, your abs are on fire. Take a breath in and exhale. Walk your hands back towards your feet. Wiggle your feet out and let's grab a yogi squat. All right, we're gonna do some handstand hops next. So there's a few different ways I like to teach um, handstand. I actually don't love these little bunny hops that we're about to do, but I think it's really important to give different tools because some people will love certain things and find them a little bit easier to grasp and some people uh, will like different things and find those easier to grasp. So I'm gonna give you a lot of different little drills and tips that I like to use when teaching handstand. Uh, my favorite way to teach is one leg at a time, but uh, doing like little bunny tuck jumps is also helpful for some people. So I want you to place your hands on the mat and come back to your forward fold. We're gonna walk towards our bear pose that we've been doing throughout class. So your hands forward, your knees are bent. Make sure you spread your fingers out nice and wide and add a little grip with the pads of the fingers. Now you wanna make sure your mat, the bottom of your mat is not slidey at all. So when you jump your feet, your mat's not gonna slide on your floor. This is a warning to double check that. So I don't, wanna, I don't want anyone to get injured, especially during my class um, or ever, but just make sure your mat's not gonna slide. That's definitely happened to me before. All right, so keeping your knees bent, I want you to sink your weight back towards your heels, maybe even bending your knees a little bit more. The goal is to stack your hips over your shoulders. You're gonna catapult your feet up, hold your knees into your chest. Maybe you hold, maybe you flip out to the side like I just did. So the goal here is to not go too far. The goal is to take little bunny hops and feel that sweet spot where you can hold for maybe just a second or so. So starting in that bare position, you're looking forward, little bunny hops, hold, and back down, trying to land with your knees bent. Little bunny hops, look between your thumbs. And maybe at first it looks like this. That's okay. Gradually over time, you'll get some more momentum. So you can hop and hold. Hug your knees into your chest. Look down between your thumbs. And give that a few shots. Now to me, this is pretty challenging to learn because you don't really know how much momentum you need. It's kind of a lot of trial and error. So you, you might end up kicking out to the side or two if you use too much effort. However, keeping your knees tucked into your chest can give you a nice low stable center of gravity. So instead of both legs extending straight up, you might feel a little bit wobbly. Keeping your knees tucked in is nice and compact shape. So you also might not feel as wobbly. Again, this is not actually my favorite drill, but some people do really like this. It can be great to get the sensation of your hips over your shoulders for uh, practicing some hang time. All right, our next thing we're gonna do that we've been prepping for, as I'm sure you've been able to tell, we'll get started in a standing forward fold. So you will need some hamstring flexibility to do this drill. If this isn't there today, you can always stand onto a block or two. That's just gonna help elevate your hips without being so much of a stretch on your hamstrings. However, to do handstand, you should have some hamstring flexibility. So maybe you wanna work on that as your first step if this is something you're working towards. Uh, for handstand, I like my hands a little bit wider than the shoulders. Spread your fingers out nice and wide, add a little grip with the, the pads of your fingers. Like we did those little heel pumps, same idea here. I want you to lift one leg up, 
And then lift your other heel up. Really lean your weight forward into your hands. This top leg is kind of going to be the lead. So you're going to bend your bottom knee, your left knee, kind of lower your right leg a little bit, and then imagine your right leg drawing a line on the ceiling and coming back down. Now at first, again, it might look like this. That's okay. Eventually, you might get some hang time, even just a second or two. What's nice here is you can use your legs to counterbalance yourself. So if you kick too much with your front leg, you can use your back leg a little bit to, to even yourself out. Now I always say in headstand, when you're balancing on your head, you really don't want to fall out side to side because there's pressure on your neck. For handstand, there's no pressure on your neck, so I would actually prefer you fall out to the right or left side, then flip all the way over into upward facing bow. That's a pretty deep back bend, and at least in this class, we haven't really prepped for that at all. So kicking out to the side is a good option. It's always a good idea to try it with both legs leading. So now I'm gonna lift my left leg up, my right heel up, make sure my shoulders are over my wrists. Now my goal is to get my hips over my shoulders, so I just need a little bit of momentum to do that. So I kind of pump that right heel, eventually take tiny little hops. You might find one side's way easier to balance on than the other. This is actually not my good side, so I don't know what's going on. <laughs> Keeping split legs is a great way to practice your balance. Straight legs is definitely gonna be the most challenging. It takes a lot of practice. It can get very frustrating. You can always practice your handstand hops up against the wall. However, it's easy to become reliant on the wall. So when you start doing the drills like this, you're starting basically from ground zero. You have no props, maybe a block or two under your feet. So you're learning basically from ground zero. And then when you start up against a wall, you have a lot of assistance. But now your ground zero is just different. This is your ground zero where you're up against the wall. So you still have to learn how to do the pose. So you're learning just kind of like a cheat that's not really gonna make learning the real thing easier. Uh, so when you kick up to the wall, you kick way too hard because you know it's there, and then your practice is coming away from the wall. But that's not gonna serve you when you're on your mat and trying to get up into a handstand. All of that work, sure, you will have strengthened your shoulders and your wrists, but most of that work is quote unquote, I don't wanna say wasted because no time on your mat or practicing is wasted, but I think you get what I mean. I, I would prefer to practice the real thing and fall out maybe a thousand times, although it can be frustrating, but eventually build the skill set to do it correctly versus taking a cheat and then having to work just as hard to come away from the wall and then eventually have to learn how to do it away from the wall anyways. So um, that's just my two cents. I don't think it's necessarily bad. Again, it can get frustrating to kick up and fall out so many times. So if you want to get used to being upside down, like if you have never done headstand before, you're not familiar with being upside down, sure, go ahead and line up next to the wall, do your best to use as much control as possible, and kick yourself up. But once you're here, you're not engaging your core, your legs, you can engage, but now it's a lot harder to work away from the wall because I know it's there. So I'm just kind of working backwards instead of forwards. Um, those are just my two cents. You can do whatever you want. I'm sure plenty of people have learned handstand doing it that way, and that's totally fine. Uh, make sure you give your wrists a nice good stretch whenever they need it. And yeah, let's go ahead and stretch out. So we're gonna meet, let's meet on our seat. We didn't do a lot of hip stuff today. So we're gonna meet in a seated position with your feet flat. Place your hands behind you and windshield wiper your knees side to side. Kind of massage out your glutes. Drop your knees over to the right, maybe placing your right foot on top of your left thigh. Little twist to the left.
Remove your right foot, drop your knees over to the left, maybe placing your left foot on top of your right thigh, a little twist off to the right. Remove your right foot, come back through center. Let's go reverse tabletop, lift your hips up. So getting a stretch a little bit of a different way, you could drop your head back. And release, lower your hips down, take a comfortable seat. If that means on the block, go for it. Take your arms out wide like a T. Let's go left arm across the body. So almost like you were gonna eagle wrap your arms with the right arm on the bottom, but the left arm's just coming across the body. Look off to the left, feel that nice stretch on the back of the shoulder. Release that, take your left arm up and over, grab your left elbow, tricep stretch. If you prefer, you could take your right arm underneath and grab for your fingers behind your back or use a towel. Release that, take your right arm across your body, feel a stretch on the back of the right shoulder and maybe look off to the right. Take your right arm up and over, grab your elbow, kind of lean back a little bit. Maybe left arm sweeps underneath and you grab your fingertips. You can always use a towel to do this one as well. The goal is to stretch the tricep, it's not necessarily to do a cool looking pose. Release that, plant your fingertips behind you, puff up your chest, broaden your collarbones, look up, drop your head back. Let's take a lion's breath, big inhale, tongue out, release some heat, uh, switch your legs so opposite shin in front, let's interlace those hands and roll out your wrists. Extend your right arm forward, fingers down, palm facing forward. Grab your fingers and pull them back towards you. Try to sit up nice and tall. And switch. Release that, make two fists. Imagine you're flinging water at a mirror in front of you, kind of stretching the wrists, the fingers. All right, plant your feet on the mat and lie yourself all the way down onto your back. Hug your knees into your chest, rock a little bit side to side. And the other way. Take your arms out wide like a T, knees over to the left, look to the right. If you prefer to cross your right leg on top of your left, go for it. Slowly unwind that if you prefer to cross your left leg over your right leg. Let's take those knees over to the right, look off to the left. Slowly unwind onto your back, unwind your legs, hug your knees into your chest. Let's go ahead and rock up to a seated meditation today. If you prefer to lie on your back, go for it. Otherwise, grab a comfortable seat. You can bring your hands top down to your thighs or your knees or Gyan Mudra. Thumb, pointer finger touching, other three fingers hugging together tightly, strong. Arms straight, so a little bend in the elbows. Shoulders roll down and back. Crown of your head lifting. If your mind starts to wonder, kind of come back to the connection of your thumb to your pointer finger. 
This mudra is great for focus, keeping your attention within the four corners of your mat. Notice any thoughts going through your mind without labeling them good or bad. Just release them. Allow the wind, your breath to carry them away. Take a moment, acknowledge your effort, your strength, trying something new or challenging today. It's never easy getting out of your comfort zone. Take a moment, allow yourself to be proud that you chose to challenge yourself. Try something new, maybe even be quote unquote bad at something. Most people or a lot of people aren't even looking to take that first step to be bad at something and learn something new. Fill yourself with some gratitude for the time you did spend on your mat today. Feel gratitude for all that your body can do and does for you on a daily basis. Even if hopping up into a handstand is not one of those things. Your body keeps you moving, keeps you breathing. Take a moment and appreciate that. Take a big breath in. Exhale, sigh. Draw your hands to your heart, Anjali Mudra. Thank you for showing up, doing something different, more of a workshop style class. Thank you for choosing to practice with me. Namaste. Thank you guys for tuning in. I know this was a little bit different style, but uh, I have a lot of flow classes out there. So I hope you, if that's what you were wanting, I hope you can find another class that you enjoy. Um, I'm trying to diversify my library and get some different stuff out there. So if you enjoyed this, let me know, give it a thumbs up. Um, I do have an online workshop that you can buy or rent. It's seven days of arm balances and inversion. So each day for seven days, one week we go over a different arm balance or inversion kind of more like this um, workshop style so if you're interested that's also going to be in the comments or the description below i think that's about it thank you so much for tuning into my channel you guys are what make this channel stay alive so i appreciate it if you like it thumbs up share it subscribe that is all i ask have a wonderful rest of your week and I will see you next week.